Hey everybody, this is Schwabi here. I'm going to talk to you today about my journey from the Tuya Smart Life to the Home Assistant. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. Even if you don't use IFT as an integration service, it's a big deal. And Paul Hubbard gave an extremely well articulated video about why that's a big deal for everyone, not just the people who are using IFT, but even those who aren't, okay? Um, at the same point, I wanna do a shout out to Colin from Brilliant Lighting Australia, who's basically taken that same Tuya Smart Home app and kind of rewrapped it into their own app. And they are making available their app, which is still uh, on the IFT network. Now, sometime in the future, they too might decide, you know what, we're out, we're not gonna do it. But at least for now, if you're just looking to get in, get out with as little trouble as possible and you wanna put your faith into the cloud in its entirety, you can check them out. And that link's gonna be in the uh, description below as well. So when I first started down this journey, I got the Raspberry Pi 4 with the, uh, as a four gig version. You'll also need a power supply that can handle three amps of power uh, going out to a USB-C connector and you'll need a 32 gig micro USD card. So let's get to the Home Assistant setup. So first you wanna download the Raspberry Pi 4, and then we need the Etcher software. We'll go ahead and download that. So we'll go ahead and run the Etcher software. Go ahead and agree. It goes through some installation process. We will flash from file, that uh, Hasio, and we will flash. Okay, so our flash is completed. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Now what we want to do is set up an optional Wi-Fi or static IP address. Now, if you don't care about what the IP address is and you're using a wired connection, this isn't needed. Come down here and uh, we can see that this is the, uh, the standard wired thing. So we're gonna copy this and I want a static IP address, so I'm going to copy this as well. If you need wireless, you'll replace this section with this section. So how do we implement this? Well, that's a great question. Let's go back here. To do this, we need to create a config folder, a network folder, and then a my network file. So here's our hasso.boot drive. And again, we need to create this config network. So I'm just gonna copy that. Come over here, we'll do new folder. And we'll paste that in. We'll cut away the network part and we'll keep the config. Then we'll do a new folder. We'll paste that network part in. And one more, we'll do a new and text document. Now I am an avid fan of Notepad++, but in this particular instance, you want to use just regular Notepad. So I'll go ahead and right click on it. I will open with and select Notepad. 
Now from before, I'm going to copy in our configuration file. Now I've already edited this, so this is my final config. Here, I'm going to highlight the my dash network. I'm going to copy that. Now I'm going to hit save. We can close out of that. And I'm going to rename this whole thing, including the extension as that my hyphen network. I'll hit enter. It's going to yell at me saying, I don't know what this extension is. You're changing the extension, blah, 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 blah. Yes. We can come down here and eject that drive. Now it's important that you eject the drive and not just pull it out because you can damage the drive and the files on that drive. Try again. And there we are successful. I'm not hooking up a HDMI cable. I'm not hooking up a keyboard or a mouse. No IO devices are being hooked up into this. Just the power, just the network. If you did not specify your IP address, you'll go ahead and, and use this home assistant dot local colon 8123. However, I did specify my as 192.168.0.20. And I'm including that colon 8123. That part's important. I go ahead and press center. And that's okay. We will wait for a moment and we'll try it again because this is our first time loading. It can take a while. So now we get this preparing home assistant. This can take up to 20 minutes. So we will just kind of wait at this point. Okay, so after we get through the, uh, the initial load, of the waiting and the whatnot, we get to pick out our name, username, password, and confirm password. So I'm just gonna say Schwobi. I'm using password for password, but uh, you should probably use something a little more secure. Where do I wanna put this? You know what, we'll, we'll go right here. Bunkingham Fountain. The start and or end of Route 66. How neat is that? And we'll save that as Imperial. So I'll just say finish. Okay, so congratulations. You have Home Assistant up and running. What do we do from here? So we're going to go to, let's check out Supervisor. Add-on store. And we will do file editor. Now we can see file editor over here. Go ahead and say start. Okay, so now that we have file editor added, we can go to the Tuya Home Assistant page. I'll have this link in the uh, description as well. And we basically just want to copy this whole thing. And we will go to file editor. We are going to make sure that we are on configurations and paste it in. Now, because I'm in the US, I am country code one. Now, one thing that this does not give in its uh, configuration recommendation is the platform, but you definitely want to put in the platform as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that over and then I'm going to copy in Smart Life. All right, I'm going to delete that part and I'm gonna delete that part. And then I'm gonna put in this uh, exclamation. And if we check this here, this says secrets, but this is just going to be secret. All right, I hit save. And then I can go into my secrets. We put this in, we put this in, and then I can type whatever my username and password is. And when I hit save, from now on, 
I can show my configurations page without having to reveal my username or password. Now, one thing to note, you cannot have an exclamation point in your username or password as the very first character. Home Assistant reads exclamation points as a command. So if you have a exclamation starting off a username or password, you'll need to change that username or password. It will not function correctly in a configuration setting up of this nature. Now that you have that, we will go into supervisor over to system and we will reboot and we will select reboot host. A little message will disappear and we will go back to the overview page. All right, now that the reboot has completed um, and we're still here at the supervisor system page, if we go up to overview, here we are. We have all the lights, we have all the scenes, we have all the switches. And uh, we can see the states of the switches, we can see the states of the lights, and we can activate the individual scenes. So with as little as even a half hour, we can go from nothing to having Home Assistant installed with connection to the Smart Life system available. From here, we can break out to integrating webhooks into Home Assistant. So stay tuned for some of that. Since you've made it this far, you must have really enjoyed the video. So please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and click that bell for future video notifications. And if this video helped you, please share it to someone else you think might help as well. Until next time, thanks for watching.